pyramids of Giza were in Ohio, you'd say, there he goes again, the crazy guy on TV. If I told you that possibly one of the greatest civilizations as advanced as Egypt or Rome was in St. Louis, I could offer you a million bucks right now and you'd feel pretty good to be like, I'm gonna be a millionaire. In a half hour, I don't think you'll take that bet. Come on, a lot to do tonight. Intriguing theory that the Indians were descendant from Jews because they had, according to Thomas Jefferson and Adair, the same laws, the same ceremonies, the same sacrifice, uh, the same priests, prophets, and fast. Even the Indian dialect seemed derived from a common prototype of the Hebrew Bible. So they didn't brush off the Native American as wild animals. They were intrigued, intrigued. Thomas Jefferson sent Lewis and Clark out. Part of it was he wanted to see the burial mounds. Find out what those are. I want to show you some things that I don't think you even knew existed. It goes against everything Manifest Destiny teaches about Native Americans. And I want you to know this part of our history because People erased it, and we'll get to that later on in the program. Erased it intentionally. That's an important part of it. America's history didn't begin with Christopher Columbus came over. There were ancient cities with advanced architectures all across North America. Did you know that? Hundreds of years before Columbus came. We always think, oh, the Indians, they didn't scar the land. It's a, no, 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 not true. These were cities as large as any in the world at the time. London or Rome, they were metropolises. Archaeologists say they have found evidence of 200,000 actual cities of mound-like structures all across North America that were here long before Columbus. But we don't know anything about them. Why? Why? Especially when you hear what you're about to hear. I want to show you three incredible examples of these Indian mounds that were discovered. But before I show you this, I want to ask yourself, I want you to ask these questions. Was Jackson right? Andrew Jackson, manifest destiny, the beginning of that. Was he right that the Native Americans were savages? Or was Jefferson right that there was something going on here that we don't even understand? Maybe they were descendants of Egyptians or Jews, or maybe they were from Asia. Where were these people from? But they weren't savages. I want you to take a look at this. This is going to blow your mind. See this here? First, let me show you the Great Pyramid of Giza. You've seen this. One side of the Great Pyramid of Giza. If you measure it, it is from the bottom to the apex, 606 feet. That's important. That's an ancient unit of measurement. It's referred to as the stade. Now, I want to show you this. These are the Newark earthworks. They're here in Ohio. Yes, Ohio. The earthworks are made, uh, they're structures that... Um, are made now of earth that has been built up from the ground in a perfect circle. Here it is, a perfect circle and a perfect octagon. But they were built by the ancient Hopewell civilization. They date back from 300 B.C. to 400 A.D. So let's look at these structures here. Bring this up. I want to show you something. If you square the inside of the octagon, here's a square and here's a square. If you square it, this is what surveyors do when they're measuring, they square the circle, and then they divide that area into four equal parts, or cubes, and then you find that each cube is made up of 606 feet, 606 feet, 606 feet, 606 feet, 606. It's made up of stades, exactly the same. Now, if that's not interesting enough, Look at the angle of the Great Pyramid of Giza. If you take the angle of the Great Pyramid of Giza, the slope is 51.8 degrees. Let's go back to the earthworks. If you measure the line that goes straight through the center of the structure, right here, and then you go true north, it's 51.8 degrees. That angle is exactly the same angle as the pyramids of Giza. It is the same math, the same calculations as ancient Egyptians. 
Let me show you one more connection. In 1860, David Wyrick, he's a guy who surveyed the Newark earthworks. He was digging into a mound near those earthworks and he found a wooden coffin made of oak. They opened up the coffin and found a skeleton of a man holding a little box. It was about 8.10 inches in size. The box had been cemented shut here. This, by the way, is sitting in Ohio. Well, he opened up the box and he found a little man inside, a little black stone. They took it to scholars and they looked at it. The man seems to be carrying something and there's writing here. At first, they couldn't recognize. The writing is, they thought in 1860, some sort of Hebrew. Well, finally, about 20 years later, they found some rabbis living in the area and the rabbis looked at that and they could read it. They said it was an old, old kind of block Hebrew, uh, block Hebrew, and it was a rendition of the Ten Commandments. Now, this is another piece. Block Hebrew, they said they'd never seen anything like it. Mainstream archeologists at the time called this a hoax. But then in 1900, or just about after 1900, in Israel, they found the same block style Hebrew writing. Mainstream archeologists still dismissed the findings. They found it in Israel and they found it in Ohio. But there was another stone that they found that they couldn't argue. This is the Bat Creek Stone. It was found during the course of an official Smithsonian evacuation. The Smithsonian didn't understand the, uh, uh, the meaning of the writing on the stone. They thought it was Cherokee since it came from Cherokee country. They didn't realize that it's actually Hebrew. They had published this originally upside down. They threw it in a box at the bottom of the Smithsonian, put it in the basement. Many years later, a scholar took it out of the box, looked at it, and went, oh my gosh, it's upside down. It's Phoenician, ancient Hebrew. So what's going on here? What is that about? Where is that history? I'll show you in a few minutes and we're gonna have a conversation and I'm gonna show you some more things that the Smithsonian science, government, commerce colluded to erase. Here's the thing we should be asking ourselves. I don't know the story of these. Do you know, did you know that? Do you live in Ohio and did you know that? Why not? Were the American Indians wronged? Yes. Yes, and that's what we focus on in America, is we were bad to the American, forget about it, it's in the past. The question should be the ones that the founders asked. Who are they? What knowledge do they have? Can you imagine the difference we would have now if we would put our differences aside and put our past in the past and concentrate on today and say, let's learn from each other. What do you have? What is that?